Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for that wonderful introduction. Uh, that's my contact information there in case you want to get a copy of the slides or have some questions afterwards and if I don't have a chance to talk to you, you can, you can contact me through any of that. The uh, topic t today will be about the top 10 supplements for longevity. And if you want a reference, this is one of the references, you can go to vitalitymagazine.com and you can basically in their search engine put super nutrients for longevity. And most of what I have to say can be found there or on, in this particular lecture or this particular article, Reversing Chronic Inflammation. Uh, so just go to vitalitymagazine.com and you'll be able to find anything that I'm going to be speaking about today. So uh, the topic is about longevity, how we can live longer and more healthy. And um, basically, as this slide illustrates, these are the key tenets of aging and illness. So what you want to control is, as much as possible, oxidative stress and inflammation, hormonal balance, you want to control your stress hormones. You want to control glucose and insulin regulation. That's very important. You want to balance your immune system. You want to control the environment to a degree where you are not chronically exposed to toxins. And you want to do the best for your biochemical individuality. Now, um, so the question is, should you be taking something that lengthens your telomeres? There's a product called TA65. Have any of you heard of this? Yeah, it's very heavily advertised. Uh, the trouble is that a six-month supply of TA65 costs between $1,200 and $4,800, uh, depending on how many capsules you take each day. They usually tell you take one or two capsules. But in a company-funded study, the average telomere length didn't change in 13 older men and women who took TA65 for 12 to 18 months. So the bottom line is that it's not clear whether you can do anything to lengthen your telomeres or whether that would stave off disease or help you live longer uh, because in actual fact, what controls a lot of uh, how long you will live is not your telomere length, but the, to the degree of inflammation you have in your system. So. If you can control inflammation, you can usually live longer. And it's been found that people that live to be over 100, they tend to have the least amount of inflammation in their system when you compare it to people that are a lot younger who have a lot of inflammation and don't live as long. So how can we do this? Well, first I think the most important thing is to start with food, and you'll hear a lot about this during Whole Life Expo. Um, there are certain foods that will help eliminate inflammation or reduce it at least, and then there are other foods that cause inflammation. So you can see on the far right, gluten, uh, casein or dairy products, processed meats, a lot of fried foods, um, lots of meat and dairy products, uh, sugar, fast foods, all of those tend to produce more inflammation while fruits, vegetables, and certain things like olive oil and spices like turmeric, uh, ginger, onions, garlic, those tend to reduce inflammation. Uh, ancient predator, modern predator. I'll tell you why later. This is a slide that illustrates the amount of sugar that you find in the soft drink, like 10 teaspoons of sugar per can of Coke. And then if you get larger slices, you get larger amounts of sugar. Uh, new research exposes the health risks of fructose and sugary drinks. This is um, something that was published very recently. And one or two sugar-sweetened beverages a day had up to 26% increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes, a 35% increased risk of developing heart attack or fatal heart disease, and a 16% increased risk of stroke. And not only that, but if you drink uh, carbonated beverages, you have a much greater chance of developing a cardiac arrest. And that's something that was published in the European Society of Cardiology journal. Uh, on the other hand, how many here think that coffee is a bad thing? If you drink organic coffee, it's been now proven that three to five cups of coffee can reduce 
a lot of illnesses and actually make you live longer. This is according to research done at Harvard. Um, basically, the benefits include a lower risk of death from cardiovascular disease, neurological disease, type 2 diabetes, and suicide. So something about coffee that allows you to live longer. And of course, uh, obesity uh, is something that is equal to inflammation. So people that have problems with weight control usually have a lot of inflammation in their system. So it's important to uh, take a look at that as well as uh, gluten. Had a gluten-free salad for breakfast today. My son gave me this slide and he told me to mention that he gave it to me and that he thought it was funny. Okay, how many here think that if you uh, consume artificial sweeteners, you're better off than if you have like highly sugared beverages? So for example, is Diet Coke really better for you than regular Coke? How many people here think that those artificial sweeteners are better for you? Anybody? You do. You don't know. Well, actual facts are that uh, if you look at the incidence of type 2 diabetes, the artificially sweetened beverages will create a greater incidence of type 2 diabetes than the sugar-sweetened ones. So this was based on a study that was done in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition uh, in 2012. So these are the best sweeteners. If you're going to use any sweeteners at all, I usually recommend that people use coconut, sugar, maple syrup, stevia, xylitol, and even honey. These all have a much lower in, uh, glycemic index than sh regular sugar or table sugar. And the worst sweeteners are aspartame, sucralose, or Splenda, fructose, and agave. Agave syrup has been touted as a good replacement for regular sugar, but it's very high in fructose, so it has a very high glycemic index. Uh, sucralose or Splenda, people think that Splenda is safe. Well, in actual fact, there were only two human studies ever done on it, and the studies done in animals showed um, things like anemia and uh, uh, infertility problems, enlarged and calcified kidneys, and spontaneous abortions in uh, rabbits. So it's not exactly safe for animals, and the only studies that in humans that looked at it were looking at tooth decay. And yes, it prevents tooth decay, but seriously, this was only, the study lasted for only four days. Uh, so it's not very good. Um, high fructose has been linked to obesity, metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, uh, high triglycerides, arthritis, gout, and even cancer. And the day after Halloween, um, Batman unfortunately consumed too much fructose. So what about fats? Fats, in general, there are some really healthy fats that help us reduce inflammation, and they would include the kind of fats that you find in olives, olive oil, coconuts, coconut oil, and even butter. Butter actually is a good fat. Um, raw dairy, if it's unpasteurized, if you can get that, uh, raw seeds and nuts, eggs, those are organic, by the way grass-fed meats and fish oil, but not the fish. The reason for that is because fish are contaminated with mercury, and in Canada, by law, you have to remove the mercury from the fish oil capsules before you can put it on the market. These are the worst fats. These are the ones that create or increase inflammation. They would include things like margarine and soybean oil, which is all GMO. Palm kernel oil, hydrogenated, partially hydrogenated fats, and so on. Margarine, by the way, under the microscope, looks exactly the same as plastic does. So it's akin to plastic. So putting that in your system will probably cause you to age a little quicker. What about wine? A little wine daily, Antonius, leads to longevity, perhaps as old as 35. So uh, a little bit of wine is probably okay because of its content of resveratrol, which is a natural antioxidant. So it can probably make you live a little longer, but if you drink too much, obviously that's a problem.